Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some Banished! Yay! So Banished is a brand new game coming out on February, I believe, the 18th. I'm playing the release candidate number six. I was given an early access key by the developer. Some, some very important things to know about this game that I just think are absolutely incredible. This is a one-man show. This was made by one guy, and it is fantastic. The UI is amazing. Um, it's got, like, all of the, the cool... Hey, that's my town! <laughs> that's so cool! It's got my my experimental town in the background. That's Now that's clever. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize it did that. But anyway, Shining Rock Software, one dude, and um, it's a really cool game. So, basically, let me give you a brief summary of what this game is. It's essentially a city builder slash survival slash manage a town type thing. It reminds me most of probably Dwarf Fortress, except, and I mean this in, in possibly the best possible way, it's better because the interface is better. Where Dwarf Fortress has the complexity, Banished has complexity too, but it looks better and it's easier to easier to see what's going on. So without further ado, let's um, first we'll go through some of the options and then we'll just we'll dive in and we'll play a bit. How's that sound? So options, um, I had to spend a little bit of time trying to balance the, the volume levels because um, there's quite a bit of stuff going on in the background. I like it, but um, you know the ambient volume, for instance, things like rain and snow were, were pretty loud. The music is gorgeous. I don't know if he composed it himself or where it came from, but I like it. I think it fits the game perfectly. Input. This is something that you can't take enough... I, can't, I mean, you just can't take this for granted. There are games out there that are made by AAA developers, <clears throat> Paradox Interactive, where you can't... Um, maybe they're not considered AAA. But anyway, you can't customize the key bindings. Right? I've made keyboard shortcuts mods for like every Paradox game I've ever played and their engine doesn't allow automatic rebinding inside the Titan in the game. Here, this guy, again, one man show. You take it, you know, you want to have multiple buttons, okay, sounds good. You want to rebind all of the keys, sounds good, no problem. And all of the things that you would expect to be key bound are bound. It's fantastic. Um, you've got video options, it's not DirectX 11 for crying out loud, one man guy. It's just, it's incredible. Um, Anti-aliasing, everything's obviously on high quality. Um, edge scrolling, clip mouse to window. That's if you want to play in like windowed full screen mode or something. Which is fantastic, good good planning there. Auto slow down on disaster, we like that. I don't want it in Celsius, I'm from the United States. Show weather effects, um, we could disable that, but we'll keep it on for now. Pause when not focused, so if you alt tab out of the game, it stops running. It's brilliant, it's great. Auto save timer, five minutes. Um, status icon opacity. And then this thing here, the user interface scale. This is the only thing I kind of was confused by. In, in my mind, user interface scale, 75 should mean small, 150 should mean large. But when you go to 150, it gets really, really tiny. So I, I, don't, I don't know, it seems backwards to me, but we will um, deal with the fact that it is that way. Okay, so um, we could play tutorials, but those are boring. Let's just dive right in. Oh, no, we don't want to load a game. We want to start a new game. We're going to call this um, Arumbaville. This seems like the only logical name. And you can use a map seed, so if you want to play in the same generated territory, um, you can share the seed with your friends or play the same seed multiple times to see if it's possible to survive. you got two different main settings, valleys, which allows you to have more buildable terrain, and mountains, which allows you to have possibly more rock mining and more, like, maybe more quarries and things. Well, quarries actually require flatland, but the mountains is just more difficult. There's more building, less building area available. Train size, uh, sorry, train size is small, medium, large. We'll play a medium. I don't plan on really expanding and, and using the entire territory. Climate seems fair. We'll put it on fair territory. Disasters on, sure. Starting conditions. Um, these, this changes the amount of stuff you start with. So if you go to hard, you have fewer people. Small amount of clothing, food, firewood, and tools. No seeds for farming are available. Medium. Start with five families. Clothing, food, firewood, tools, and some construction materials are provided. A storage barn has already been built. Some seeds for fields and orchards are available. And then on easy, you start with even more stuff. Six families. A large amount of clothing, food, firewood, building materials, and tools are provided. Etc. Etc. Seeds for, for fields and orchards are available, as well as a herd of livestock. Well, let's dive right in. I've played the game for probably about an hour and a half. Um, my experience is not 100%, but 
I am, uh, I, I don't know, I think I'm pretty adept at games like this. So we'll play on hard, and just start off this way. That looks really cool, I like that town. Generating names for townsfolk. I, I just can't express at, at how, how amazed I am at how beautiful this game is, and every time I think that, I think, this was made by one guy. And, without being too hypercritical of the makers of Dwarf Fortress, that was made by a, a pair of brothers over the course of like 12 years. And it's not done. This game, one guy, I just, it's just amazing. So let's take a second to look around the world, talk about some of the key bindings. This is the map. This is medium, by the way. Pretty darn large world. It might not look as large as it is in the game until we actually start playing, but this is huge. There's so much space available to do stuff. So much, so much space available for games and um, activities. So anyway, um, we, we're starting on the end of this little peninsula here, which is interesting. Seems fine to me. Um, we could fish there, and that looks like the main river. We can do trade and all that stuff. Um, now one thing that's kind of nice is that you can customize the UI to your own liking. And as you know, I love keyboard shortcuts, and this game is full of them. So we've got these buttons down here, which are keybound to F1 through F9, which is just the most logical thing in the world, and I love it. So you can go F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to F9 fantastic. These buttons are keybound 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up through 10. It's amazing! Oh my god, I get so excited about it. So if you want to go, like, build a wooden house, it's 1. Build a stone house, it's 2. It's just so nice. And if you don't like it, you can rebind it. You can go over to here and you go, ooh, let's build that one, let's build this one. It's just amazing. I love it. We have um, keyboard shortcuts to control the game speed. Um, first thing I want to do is turn on all of these, these settings. And I actually... I was reminded by playing this game of like the EVE Online interface, which was very adaptable, very, very easy to manipulate. And honestly, also it reminded me of World of Warcraft because um, there were plenty of mods available that allowed you to have customized UI, and I don't know if those specific titles influenced the UI decisions for this game, but it feels great. So we're going to turn on most of the things and we'll go over them as we get there. So you get these icons or these these little, um, what would you call these, user, user interface elements, and you can put them wherever you want. The only complaint I might have is that you can't resize them. They're all going to be based on that game setting size that we chose down here, the user interface scale. So um, let's put these things where I had them before, I th think. So I, I had a Roomba bill down here. I like this thing to be up here. The event log goes down here. This goes here. You'd only, you only have to do this one time. The save game seems to remember where you place everything. The, uh, but when you reload or start a new game, you have to place them where you want them. So I kind of like them like that. This gives me a nice workable area over here. And this thing kind of kind of pops out in a slightly interesting way. If it were me, I'd probably have this thing just pop off to the side over here. But, um, because this, this is just kind of weird how it comes out of there. I, I get that it's trying to be, like, right in the center, but why? It doesn't really need to be that way. It makes more sense to me to actually have it come strange to this small square down here, just so that it is, uh, easier to balance your interface. But, anyway, so, let's talk about some of these cool things. We've got, um, the name of the town. It is early spring in the first year. Here's our current number of adults, students, and children. We have eight adults, five children, and it's currently 36 degrees outside. We have 13 instances of citizens that don't have homes. Now, the whole concept behind Banished is that you are basically banished from civilization and you're just going to go create your own town. So here we are. These people apparently are evil people and were kicked out of town. And they're going to go start their own lifestyle like pilgrims or something and be friendly and happy. So we have a storage cart. That's nice. This is all we get. 100 firewood, 20 hide coats, 20 iron tools. 100 and, uh, 1,200, excuse me, potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes, man. They, that's probably why they're banished. They stole all the potatoes from a town and just ran away. It must be what happened. And then, for some reason, they ran to the edge of a peninsula. I don't know how they got the wagon through this forest, but they're very crafty people. So, this is your basic um, material list here. We've got our stored logs, stored firewood, stored food, overall health of the citizens, the average happiness of the citizens, stored medicine, stored coal, stored stone, iron, tools, stored clothing, and 
Alcohol. Does this remind anyone else of Dwarf Fortress? <laughs> we need more booze. We're not dwarves, but we, we do like alcohol. Um, here we have the event log. I do like to turn this thing on just because I like when people I like to know when everything happens. And I'm gonna leave the UI up pretty much the entire time I play. I just I like I like having it. I don't know. I like being able to click click around. You can zoom around um, using the the WASD keys. You can move around, or you can just click, which is nice. You can set hotkeys for locations. So if you want to go to save camera locations for fast navigation of important town locations, we can go down here. We can say, okay, I want to go. This one is going to be that. So I've just clicked a couple buttons, right? Now, since I have five key bindings, I can use Z to just go right back there. ZXVB. ZXCVB, actually. will go to those five locations, which of course can be rebound in the options menu. You must know how much I like ZXCVB. It reminds me of the Crusader Kings 2 keyboard shortcuts mod that I did. So, without further ado, let's, um, let's build some stuff. You know, we should probably start off by building, um, I don't know, a house, perhaps. And, uh, do we want to just build it right in the corner? Sure, why not? Now we can control the angle that we zoom in using the page up and page down key. Like, we can come in. I like to come in a little bit more isometric, like off the top, um, up here. Bird's eye view type thing. And so, yes, let's build a wooden house, say, here. We'll just get one started for now. And we will also build some basic wooden road. Dirt road. Wooden road would be very strange. Um, and then we're gonna go with. Um, I, I I know the keyboard shortcuts are there. I just am, I'm not perfect with them yet. We're gonna build a storage barn, which is where we're gonna put all of our food, clothing, textiles, and tools. We can control the the direction that it faces like this by pressing the R key or the T key. Um, we can also change the design of certain buildings by pressing F. But. Um, the little green triangles indicate like what side they have access to. So we'll go ahead and rotate it like this. And we'll have it have access right on that road. Right next to the house. Why not? And let's also go ahead and designate... Designate? Mm, sounds like Door Fortress again. A, uh, a stockpile. Just a small one. 4x4. Four four. Um, actually, why don't we go ahead and give it some... Some access around. We'll put space between there. And then we'll go back to building some more dirt roads. So we've designated all of this. It's, again, very similar to Dwarf Fortress. We've designated activity, but it hasn't been done yet. Now we need to assign some labor. So we have eight adults, eight people that are capable of working. As normal, children are useless and won't do anything except for run around playing and making messes. Um, we can now, because of these things I've designated, we have six building jobs that are currently available. In order for somebody to take up that responsibility, I need to assign a certain number of our adults as builders. So let's go ahead and um, let the game tick for a second. And, uh, oh, why don't you let me click? Click, click, click. Ah, there we go. Nope, still not letting me build. I guess perhaps we don't have any tools? What's happening now? Hmm. There we go. I guess for some reason that UI got locked. Well, after all, it is a beta, so um, I can't. I see. I can't click that button now. I guess we have to close it again, and reload it again, and then click it. Nope, it's not working again. Oh, you know what? It feels like the mouse is off. Okay, in that case, we'll just use the keyboard to type them out. And we'll try clicking a little bit above it. Somehow my mouse is... Uh, see how it's like I'm like, pointing on the one above it? That didn't happen when I played earlier. Might be something related to... I don't know. Who knows what. Okay, so we've assigned a few people to builder slots. And now they're going to go and they're going to take up that job. When we click on the actual constructions, we can see there are two citizens that are currently working this location. We can actually click through and see who they are. Got some guy named Ramian. Apparently that is a, a dude. 
He's wearing fair clothing and he's working. <laughs> and we also got Evan, who's a, a female, who is working. Her name is Evan. Seems like a strange name for a female. And then we have four laborers who are just going to do general moving stuff around type things. Easy work such as clearing areas and moving produced goods to storage. So the builders are actually starting off with the dirt road, which is fine. The dirt road just helps them move marginally faster. Eventually we'll upgrade it to stone. Got a little bit of rain happening in the background. What are you people doing? Idling? Well that's unacceptable. So this is an adult citizen. She's 14, um, doing nothing. So why don't we go ahead and designate some area for them to work on. We'll go ahead and just say remove all resources. So cut this stuff down. So now laborers, if they have nothing to do, should go ahead and pick up the task of going to cut some stuff down. She's now working. Go and cut the things. They do seem to prioritize building roads for some reason. It's one of those quirky things, I guess. In uh, Dwarf Fortress, you know, they'd always build from top down, top left to bottom right. Army of little forest people. Now, it's worth noting that um, I find the game to be incredibly immersive, even playing on speed one, but um, it does seem to take quite a while for anything meaningful to happen. It can take half hour to an hour to get through the first year. So we will play a little bit quicker. We'll go up to say speed two at least. But you can always slow it down if you, you feel like things are going too quick. One thing that would be kind of nice, uh, again, I hate to compare it to Dwarf Fortress as often as I am, but it would be nice if there was an idler's indicator somewhere saying this many people are currently idle. I mean, it's nice to be able to see that they're idle when you check out their activity, but um, you damn little kid, you need to start get working. Just because you're eight doesn't mean you get to sit around doing nothing. Alright, so first things first, like a, with a wooden house, if they need to remove any obstructions or debris, they're going to do that first. In this case, there were none of those items that needed to be moved. They needed 16 logs and 8 stone, so those are all currently here. They've been taking them from the storage cart and putting them in the wooden house. And now the builders are doing the job. Two builders are working on this 0 of 30, or they will soon. So this will start ticking up one point at a time until it gets to 30. See, there we go. One out of two out of thirty, three out of thirty. Um, they're bringing more logs over here. We actually don't have any spare logs. So we need to chop down quite a bit more wood. I'll admit that the first time I played, I played on the easy setting, so they had quite a bit more stuff available. These little indicators above them let us know that they are still homeless. storage barn takes quite a bit of wood. And we have our very first house. Macker and Evan have decided to come live here. It's a 14-year-old male with an 18-year-old woman, female. Um, we probably are going to want a few more houses than just that. In fact, it would be nice if I had put a road here as well, but alas, we have failed. We could start another house, but I kind of want them to finish that storage barn right away. Now only 11 people are homeless. So we have the aristocracy. Two people who get a house, and 11 people who don't. So, right now, it's letting me know that the reserve of logs is low. Shock. Horror. Um, there, are all, there are four assigned builders, but only two builder jobs. And that's because there's just two builders can work on this. If I wanted to, I could actually say, I only want one worker. To work on it. But we're not going to do that. We're going to let them go ahead and work. Now stockpile looks like a building, but it's actually just land where they just kind of plop all the materials down. <laughs> Little visual indicator there tells you that you're low on a material. So they're going to bring this stuff over and put it in the stockpile. A little bit more stone than we really need. I think we should probably focus more on the, uh, the wood front. So let's go and designate just trees down here. So we're going to go down to harvest trees. And we'll just say, we need these trees over here. Please go chop them down. 
If you haven't seen the similarities between this game and Dwarf Fortress by now, then you haven't played Dwarf Fortress yet. But again, I insist this game, to me, already feels better. It's just... It's... I, let's put it this way. I practiced this game for the first hour and a half while rendering, you know, encoding other videos, which is an incredibly processor-heavy task. And the game ran perfectly at speed 10 on a large map. Compare that to Dwarf Fortress, which was built 10 years ago, operates on a single core, and can't use your graphics card. It's like night and day. The game runs beautifully, it's just, I can't say enough good things about it. So, I am going to, to take a brief break here. Um, this is you know, the first video in a Let's Look At, Let's Try. So, I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, as always, if you want to show your support, please do like the video, and maybe go pay attention and check out the release date. Uh, there should be a link in the description down below for the, uh, the store location. This is going to be available on Steam. Please do check it out. I think it's a great title, and they, you know, the developer deserves your attention. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you soon. See you again in the next video.